Now, the Institute of Education Studies, IFEST, is criticizing the Ministry of Education of sidelining the Ghana Education Service in the implementation of pre tertiary related education in initiatives. IFES describes that process as unacceptable and one that is not helping in the development of Ghana's education system, especially at that level. This is coming days after the Ghana Education Service wrote to the World Bank about it being kept in the dark in the implementation of the Gallup project. But is it enough for us to use a single incidence to conclude that a GES is being sidelined, or there is more? Fuan says on this, we've been joined on Zoom by Peter Patianti, who is the executive director of IFEST. Now, Peter, what is making you draw such a conclusion? Thank you very much. Um, every watcher of the education sector would realize that for some time now, we have had serious challenges with implementation of policies uh, in the education sector. We can mention the national standardized test that was um, implemented with all the confusion and the chaos that 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 accompanied it we we knew from the from the discussions on the NSAT that the ghana education service and even yaec had serious reservations about the mode and the format that the nst was about to was was to was to be implemented mm -hmm. of course um the national assessment framework had a laid down procedure to, by which the NST should have been um, undertaken. But the ministry stood their ground and decided to go by a, a cluster system, decided not to make the NST a school-based assessment. They made it an, a, an external form of assessment. And since that, six months down the lane, we've not even heard the results of the NST. Our information is that the students couldn't shade and, and that the results that might be released in any moment from and then in, within next month uh, cannot be relied on. Aside that, we have seen an erratic academic calendar at the junior high school and then senior high school and even at the basic level. That is something that was not part of our educational system. We all knew when we went to school, we all knew when schools would vacate and when schools would reopen. It wasn't in the news. We knew that was something that shouldn't even be a problem. But now we are having serious issues with the academic calendar. We are having instances where students get to school and the next day they are being told that the school is being vacated. And all this is happening at the time that we have been told by the Minister of Education that there's been a committee set up at the ministry to, to find a lasting solution to the academic calendar issue. The verdict of that committee is in the public domain. I can also cite the, the issue that Nagrat brought up about um, the, the, the decision or the plan to uh, appoint a headmaster or recruit headmasters for the newly stem built schools. Mm -hmm. We know that the deputy minister came out to refute that allegation, but it is true. There are documents to that effect that this was planned and that it is when Nagrat decided to talk about it that the, 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 the decision was, was backed down. Mm -hmm. The recruitment of personnel in the education service is the sole responsibility of the Ghana Education Service. Now, what if it becomes the icing on the cake is the recent Gallup uh, Bruhaha, which we, we are all aware that you cannot in this country train 40,000 teachers and indicate that the Director General of the Ghana Education Service is not aware. It, 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 it beats the imagination of anybody who is a watcher of the education system. And these are the trends that I can cite the school placement system, which has, has serious challenges, and I'm mm. told that CID and other investigative agencies are working with that. These are, these, these are trends that we, we in the Institute have realized, and we've seen that in all these instances, there seems to be a, a conscious or an unconscious attempt to implement these policies at the blind side of the Ghana Education Service. And that is why we are having the implementation challenges, because the mandate of the Ghana Education Service is to implement policies and programs that have been brought up at the pre-tertiary level. So if you are doing this implementation without recourse to them, then definitely you face challenges. Mm. You mentioned that CID is doing an investigation. What, what more do you have on that one? The CID, I, I think the the, the um, deputy director general wrote to the CID to investigate the, the alleged issues of corruption that has grappled the uh, school placement system. And I, I, I'm told that they are, they are working on it. I think when they, they bring out their report, we'll see what is really happening. 
Mm. Now, but what likely impact will there be when projects are implemented directly by the ministry? Now, you, you, you note that these are investments. Mm -hmm. And let me state that in February, the World Bank wrote to the Ministry of Education and they complained bitterly about the slow pace of implementation of the Gallup project. You know that the Gallup project was supposed to transform selected basic schools that were low performing in terms of their outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, because this particular project have also been um, um, uh, taken over by the uh, Ghana uh, Ministry of Education. Mm. The World Bank is complaining about the, the slow pace of the, 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 the implementation of the project. And I want to state that what is happening means that we are not going to get the required output that we need to get or returns that we need to get anytime we do investment in education. And that is very serious for the, for the country, especially the president who is making a lot of investment in education okay. this investment needs to yield the needed returns if we are having implementation challenges and the challenges are because the the mandated institution that needs to do these kinds of implementation are not giving the space to operate then we need to set up and 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 and, and call people to to order before we, we just throw money out there and we will not get the needed returns in the investment we are making in the education sector. What, what, what would be your proposal uh, for us to overcome this challenge we're, we're, we're facing? So in we just make, 30 we seconds three, for me. Yeah, we made three recommendations. The first thing is that, of course, everything starts and stops with the Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. We want the Minister of Education to show leadership. We want him to um, stand up and, 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 and look at the situation and whatever he needs to do to make sure that whatever challenges that are happening within the sector, he will be able to uh, handle it. We want the Council of the Ghana Education Service to also stand, stand up and, and be counted. We need them to understand their mandate and ensure that mm. the work of the Ghana Education Service is not compromised. And finally, we wish that the president, because of his investment in the education sector, he needs to step in, in this direction. All right, thank you. Now, let's still stay in the education sector because the Education Minister, Dr. Yao Seyeduchum, and officials of the Ghana Education Service have been summoned to appear before the Education Committee this week to answer questions over the ministry's involvement in the alleged $1.2 million phantom training of some over 40,000 teachers. The minister at a press conference denied any wrongdoing on his part, but the committee is not convinced with the minister's denial. Ranking member on the Education Committee of Parliament has been speaking to join News. Yeah, the minister's response to the allegations made by the World Bank uh, has not convinced us as members of uh, the committee because uh, we've discovered that uh, if the money, that the 1.2, was sitting in the accounts at the ministry. Why did he fail to respond to the uh, letter written to him four months ago, only to tell us uh, in the press conference that I released that uh, he had the money there. They are written to even congratulate him on what he had done. We are not convinced. So with the chairman, we are summoning him before the Committee on Education on Tuesday at 10 a.m. to respond to a number of questions that we'll be asking him. What is the committee seeking to achieve with this meeting? Uh, this is very, very scandalous because uh, if a World Bank should uh, come out with this report, it's going to affect uh, other projects as far as education is concerned. The World Bank may not trust the Ministry of Education again to deliver on a number of uh, projects. So we are seeking the minister to tell us the truth so that when we know the truth, then we can go ahead and then make some recommendations to the speaker. I see. And is he the only one appearing before the committee or there are others who are going to accompany him? We are inviting him with the Director General of uh, the GES because uh, there is a response also by the Director General that uh, he was not aware. How come that your teachers are being trained and you are not aware? So we want him also to tell us under what project was that 40,000 plus teachers trained. We want to know from him also. Because the Director General is the chief advisor to the President on pre-teacher education in the country. 
So if such a project is ongoing, he must be well involved. 